What's up, Gear Mortals? Trey Xavier here. Last year I put out a video called Metal Songwriting Tips and Tricks. You guys seemed to like it a lot and I had a lot of fun doing it, and I have been wanting to do another one. So finally, here we are, Metal Songwriting Tips and Tricks 2. So what are we gonna talk about this time? Mostly, how to create variations on riffs. When I say a riff, really what I'm talking about is a motif. A motif is just a little musical idea, a little nugget a beginning of an idea, a seed, that you can take and turn into literally an entire symphony. If we think about, for example, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, most famous piece of classical music ever. Ba 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 ba. He took just that and turned it into the entire Fifth Symphony. Basically, that's what we're gonna do today, but on a less grand scale. So what I have here is this super basic, simple riff that I came up with. It's nothing super special, but it's, it's fine. It's serviceable, reasonably heavy, and I like it a lot. So we're gonna take it and turn it into a bunch of different kinds of riffs. All the different sounds you're gonna hear in this video are tune track sounds. We're using Easy Bass for the bass, Easy Drummer for the drums. We're using the Death Metal uh, Easy X. Sounds awesome. And then I'm using some Easy Mix sounds for the guitar. So here is the riff in its purest form. Here it is, just the guitar. Just uh, four bars, pretty syncopated, lots of space in it. In its current form, sounds kind of genty. The main thing that we have to do is think about it in its most basic form, its most simplified rhythmic self, okay? So basically we have this ba, ba da, ba da da, ba ba da da, ba da 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 da, ba ba da da. So we've got like two halves, right? Here's the first half. So it's ba. Ba na ba na na ba da. Here's the second half. Ba da da ba da 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 ba ba da da. Okay, so we take the pitches out of it entirely. That's what we're left with is this rhythm. I personally think that the rhythm is more the musical identity of a motif than any other part of it. That's what really makes it unique. And you can apply just about any kinds of pitches to it, and it'll retain its identity in some form. Having the same or similar pitches or a, a similar melodic contour will also help add to the identity of it, but we're really gonna focus on just the rhythm of it, okay? So all the ideas that we're gonna take from this little motif and grow from there are gonna retain some version of the rhythmic identity of it. Let's take a look at another version of the riff. So the first variation that we're gonna try is extremely simple. All we're gonna do is insert a bunch of palm muted notes in between the notes that we've already got. We're gonna leave those notes open and not muted. The rhythmic character of the part is gonna be maintained because the difference between the open notes and the palm muted notes is gonna be what gives it some dynamics. So that's gonna sound like this. So you can hear how that's the same musical idea, but it's just different enough to give us another variation, a little bit more mileage out of that same motif. Not only is it different enough, it's also more intense than the first version. So if in your song you've got your intro and then that riff, the original version, and then this one, we've taken that same familiar idea that we played a couple times, the listener has now heard it and is familiar enough with it, and then we have this little bit of a surprise. Just We've just ratcheted up the tension a little bit, we've cranked up the heat on the same idea without pulling out a completely new wild idea out of left field that has no relation to the idea that we've got. That gives us a really nice continuity and it grows the part rather than abandoning it for something new and unrelated. The next variation on this idea that we're gonna look at doesn't actually have anything to do with the guitars. We're gonna leave them as is. We're using the, the palm muted version and we're just gonna take the bass line and we're gonna change it up a bit. Right now, it's pretty much exactly the same thing that the guitars are playing. And that's like, okay, it doesn't sound terrible, but it's also not very interesting, and it doesn't really move the song forward. So we're gonna add a little bit of harmonic interest to the part by changing up the bass line a bit. I'm generally of the opinion that the bass should not always follow every single little thing that the guitar does. I think in metal that happens way too much. I think that a bass line should really focus on making sure that the harmonic structure of 
the part is really very clear and you're able to hear how the chords are moving throughout the piece. So I'm gonna uh, try to do that with this bass line right now. For example, the first note of this is like a fifth higher than the root, but the bass is gonna stay on the root for that part. Hear them together. So that way you're hearing that that note that's a fifth up is the fifth and not the root. Sometimes you hear the first note of a riff as being the root and uh, we're gonna avoid that. And then we're gonna do a little walk up. The idea is that we're gonna give a little more harmonic context to the guitars. For example, this little lick here could sort of be contextualized more as like a little melody part over a bass note that will give it way more pop. Okay, so now we've got this. That's clearly way more interesting than it was just following the guitar part. Sometimes you run into this problem, especially with low tuned guitars, something called low limit intervals. That's where an interval between like the bass and the guitar would have sounded good in a different range, but down low it gets really muddy and it doesn't really work. So sometimes the bass, especially in heavy music, just has to follow the guitar for certain parts because otherwise it'll just be a big muddy mess. So that's one thing to think about if you write a bass part and it sounds like it's clashing and muddy with the guitars, it, it might be a matter of that. So here's what I've got. So that's actually simpler than the original bass line that I had, but isn't it just like so much more exciting to listen to. It really pulls you through the whole riff. And this, this is only four measures. With some more complex harmonic movement, you can really pull the listener from one place to another, but this is a great sort of microcosm of that idea. In the first Metal Songwriting Tips and Tricks video, I talked about how you can vary the same riff by adding a different drum beat underneath it. That's another thing that you can do along with this kind of idea. So let's talk about the arrangement of your song. Let's say we've got our intro and then we've got this riff idea, the first one with all the space in it, and then the second one with the palm mutes. That doesn't have to be the only thing that you change. You can also change the drum beat to match, maybe double up the kick or the amount of times that the snare is hit, change the power hand, anything like that. And you've already got tons of variation and it's gonna sound to the listener almost like a completely different thing, but still with so much familiarity. The most important thing that I want you to get from this is that we've changed everything and yet the core idea is still the same. The motif hasn't changed at all. Real quick example of this, I think this riff in particular would sound pretty awesome as a thrash beat. So I'm just gonna grab a th thrash beat out of the thrash MIDI pack in Easy Drummer. So now we've varied the riff, the drum part, and the bass line. And that to me sounds really awesome. Of course, I'm like a pretty big fan of this fast, thrashy type of two-step kind of a beat. So when I hear it, I get pretty stoked no matter what. But especially after we've heard it in this other sort of more spaced out, groovy version with, with a lot of space in it. So let's hear what that sounds like. So we've sort of ramped up the intensity on all the levels of the song. Every part of the band gets more intense and a little bit more exciting. You can do this in so, so many different ways. One major difference between heavy music and pretty much every other genre on earth is dynamics. Metal, I love you, but dynamics are not your forte and that's okay. The reason that we like it so much is because it's so intense. There's a whole lot of everything all the way up for very long periods of time. And you sort of have to build your dynamics into the songwriting. It's not like jazz where you can kind of improvise and play with people's emotions by playing softer and louder just on the spot, okay? So it's very important in the songwriting aspect. Even if you're not gonna have production dynamics in the sense of the mastering or the mix or, or levels, the dynamics that we, we can focus on even 
in parts of the song where everything is just all 127 blasted out, super loud, everybody's hitting really hard. We get those dynamics through these kinds of small variations in stuff like the guitar performance. Here we've done two different kinds of dynamic levels. One, where there's a lot of space, and then a second one where we've got palm mutes filling up the space, but the dynamics is created between the open notes and the palm muted notes. For this next part, I just want you to listen for a second. <laughs> So did you catch where the motif was in this version? I'll show you. The lead part was a little bit of a distraction. I'm gonna mute it and we're gonna listen to everything else and see if you can catch it this time. Listen to the rhythm of the part. Ba, ba da, ba da da, ba da ba da da, ba da 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 da, ba ba da da ba, ba da. It's the same exact thing, same rhythm, just juiced it up a little bit, gave it some chords to play the same rhythm to so that there's more harmonic movement. This could be basically the chorus of the song. I substituted a lead guitar for a, a vocal melody, but it could be anything really, anything that needs a little bit more harmonic motion than we've been having in the, in the other riffs. So far, we've only talked about taking our motif, our simple riff idea, and making it more intense. Now I wanna talk about how we can take it down a notch. In order to have a really intense, high dynamic level, it has to be contrasted against a lower dynamic level. This is a really easy trick to take the super intense dynamic parts, the really high dynamic level parts, and make them feel even more intense by having things that come before it be a very, very low dynamic level. Not just in terms of volume or amount of instruments or anything like that. You can take your motif and take just part of it and have this little, much smaller idea and have that repeat more times. So remember we talked about the first half of the motif and the second half. So what I've done in this version of the riff is taking the guitars out entirely, have just the bass, and the bass is only playing the first half of the motif, and then with a little, a little lick to keep it interesting every four times that it goes. But I've also simplified it by restricting the number of pitches that it's actually playing, so it's really just the root note, aside from this little lick, so it sounds like this. This to me is a really great place to start because we're intentionally bringing the dynamic level way down so that we have a lot more places to go. If you're starting at 126 and the only place you have left to go is 127, the listener isn't gonna really feel that difference. But if you start way, way, way down low, by the time you get to 127, it's gonna feel like such a roller coaster ride and it's gonna have a lot more emotional impact. Metal isn't really known for that kind of subtlety, but this is a really easy trick to just give your composition a lot more heft. I really like the idea of having tiny, medium sized, and big versions of your motif. And you can make your motif smaller by doing things like reducing the number of pitches that you're using in it, or cutting the rhythm in half, just using the first half of it, or by playing the part in a different register. Usually, to make it smaller, I like to move it up so move it up an octave or two or maybe even three. This is something that Metallica did in the song Frantic. You can hear they play the riff up higher with a lot less instrumentation. So you get this -na 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 and then when the band kicks back in, it's down an octave lower again and it's, it just makes it that much more intense. Another thing that you can do to make your motif smaller is to play it twice as fast so that it fits twice as many times in the same amount of space. And then conversely, to make your motif bigger, you can just play it half as fast. Other things I like to do to make a motif bigger are to like double it with a different instrument, double it in octaves, either an octave up or an octave down, or maybe both, to orchestrate it a little bit more in the sense of having more things that are centered around it. All these things are gonna draw more attention to your motif and make it a lot more prominent and make it the thing that people are focusing on, which depending on the arrangement of your song and the part, uh, that might be something that you want. So on the topic of taking your motif and making it bigger, stretching it out, getting a little more mileage out of it, I wanna talk about turning this motif 
into an intro. Something that I see all the time in metal is the acoustic or clean guitar intro. This is about as low of a dynamic level as I generally see in metal. So we're gonna try that right now. I'm gonna show you how I did this. <laughs> So what I've done here is taken the motif and I'll play a little bit of it and then stop. Put a little space and then play the next bit of the motif. That's how it would have gone, but instead I played. And then you wait. Wait a little more. added a creepy little thing at the end because it sounds creepy and cool. So this is a really cool way to build an intro because you're feeding them little bits of the motif at a time. Metal is cool because the song form isn't restricted to a pop format of intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, 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 chorus. You can do way, way more with a metal song format than in most other genres, especially with like a longer type of song format. It's not unusual for a metal track to be six, seven, eight, ten minutes. So you can use that to your advantage in the same way that a screenwriter will use foreshadowing. You know, we're sort of foreshadowing this motif and by the time we get to the end, you're almost gonna be sick of it. Not really. You can use that same kind of foreshadowing by introducing your motif slowly. You could do it even more drawn out than this. For this part, I'm using the Easy Bass Vintage Bass, which is a little bit thumpier sounding. But I'm also using it to sort of fill out some of these spaces in the part. It's a little busy over here too. So even in this, we've got growth from the first half of it to the second half. The cool thing about these types of techniques is that you can apply them to any musical idea ever. You can do this with pretty much any instrument, any genre, any style, any of the many, many thousands of subgenres of metal. And it'll allow you to take a single idea and make a whole song out of it, a whole symphony. More importantly, I think than anything else, is that this is going to prevent you from having riff salad. The idea that you have to throw all these crazy, wacky, different ideas at your song to make it interesting. And I think that actually can tend to make it less interesting. Even extremely progressive bands like Dream Theater, they'll take little motifs and sprinkle it throughout the song and it keeps the song very cohesive and coherent and it makes it feel like a complete piece of music, a complete musical thought, rather than just the kitchen sink style whatever. Random bullshit. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully you learned a little bit about how you can take some of your musical ideas and stretch them out into a whole song. Thanks to TuneTrack for sponsoring this video with Easy Bass, which is totally awesome, as you heard in the video. What I wanna know from you today is, if I do a third video in this series, what kind of things do you want me to cover? What kind of things do you wanna know about songwriting? different techniques and cool stuff that you can do to make your songs better. I wanna know, so be sure to leave me a comment in the comment section saying that. As always, if you haven't already, mash that subscribe button, smack the bell to join the notification squad. Drop me a like and I'll see you real soon.